There are shows with psychics. And there are shows with doctors. But there's no show like the psychic and the doc. Your practical paranormal power unleashed. This show synthesizes the talents of world-class medium Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, and street smart spiritualist, behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Basili. All subjects are on the table and no topic is taboo. Inspiration, insight, action, and fun as Mark Anthony connects callers with loved ones in spirit in tandem with Dr. Pat's fresh, no-nonsense, street smart, intuitive insights. And she is hilarious. Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions, which may come from this side or the other side. This is the psychic and the doc and And it it starts starts now. Happy New Year, everybody. This yeah. is uh, yeah, this is our first show of the new year. And the theme tonight is accelerated expansiveness. Now, those are two action words. And speaking of action words, I'm Mark Anthony, the psychic explorer, <laughs> psychic lawyer, and I'm with my action co-host, Dr. Pat Basili. And we are the psychic in the doc, and we will be taking calls from yeah. listeners. Yeah. The number is 1-800-930-2819. But first, I, I want to talk to Dr. Pat a bit about accelerated expansiveness. And what's fascinating about this, Dr. Pat, I understand that when you were in the early stages of forming the Transformation yeah. Network, that was kind of one of the key concepts or, or key phrases. Yeah. And it sort of kind of meandered through, and now it's coming back full force. Tell tell us about about the the early days of Transformation Network and yeah. accelerated expansiveness. I'll tell you about it because it was look when people ask me about the timing of things, uh, and then I look back, it's really fascinating for me. Of course, the first show this is my twentieth anniversary for the Dr. Pat show, formerly known as Crust Busting. And we're going to be doing stuff on that. But people ask me, why did you launch launch the network then? And I say, I didn't do it. It was divinely guided in the worst economic crisis we have had. Now, Covid also seen as something like that. But we have forgotten what people Mark went through. And remember, go back to 08 and 09, if you could. Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember okay. that. Okay. Yeah. I'm talking about my buddy, best selling author, best selling book, homeless in a homeless tent in Sacramento. But our show stayed on. Uh, I used my life savings to keep this show on in that period of time. We had listeners that were unemployed, it was the growth point of the show. And Accelerated expansiveness was what came to me when the series of events that happened happened unexpectedly. I was never scheduled to launch a network. My friend was, and I've shared this story before. He wrote a bad check, and my friend Chris DiPaolo, who recently passed away unexpectedly, owned a network, WBLQ in Rhode Island. It's a little state, but Taylor Swift has a home there. And Chris called me and said, you're responsible. I have to pay a mortgage in his New York. Listen, Basile, you he was your friend. Where's Greg? He wrote a check, it bounced. You need to send me $2,200 and start a network. And I said, okay. And I wrote him a check in the middle of the worst economic downturn. But what happened after that? Oliver from Germany showing up, who is here with us today again. Chris DiPaolo, I'll give you 20 hours of airtime on WBLQ. Find the host. Host showed up. 20 hosts showed up within a month. When the first month happened and I sent out the first invitation for host, I said, join a network that's about accelerated expansiveness. Join a conscious network that believes in manifesting at the speed of light. That was the birth of it. And then there are campaigns we've done after that. And this year it's going to be one of them. 
But if you believe in the power of exp accelerated expansiveness, now I want to say this from your perspective, Mark, because I want you to copy on, uh, uh, comment on it. Okay. You will accelerate it, your. You will accelerate the expansive nature of poverty as fast as you poverty consciousness as fast as you will accelerate the expansive nature of prosperity. What are you going to choose for 2023, Mark? I think without a doubt, you have to choose the um, prosperity. Yeah. And now that may seem obvious, but you know, we get a lot of calls from people that say, um, I don't like my job. Do you see anything about me getting a new job? To which I'll ask, well, what are you doing about it? And the response is nothing. Now, how are you going to have accelerated expansiveness if you sit on your tush and you don't do anything? So. Thomas Jefferson, and I'm paraphrasing the, the exact quote because he was very you know long-winded, but basically he said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about um, accelerated expansiveness. If you just sit there and say, oh, um, I never meet anybody. Well, what are you doing about it? Nothing. If you get out of something what you put into it. And if you put nothing into something, that's what you're going to get out of it. And so this is a mindset. Um, do you want to sit there and say, oh, woe is me. I can only uh, work at this minimum wage job. And I remember one time there was a discussion going on in Facebook and I said, well, minimum wage isn't a career objective. And immediately I was attacked. Well, you're a man, white privilege, blah, 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 blah. It's like, excuse me. Um, Motivation has no gender. Motivation has no color. Motivation mm -hmm. is what you do to make yourself more successful. Yeah. And, and that doesn't always have to be in the financial arena. It could be in the personal arena, in the spiritual arena. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I want to be enlightened. Well, yeah, I mean, anybody can be enlightened sitting on a mountaintop on, in Hawaii, but it's when you're in the real world and it's the challenges that you face. So that's a very important question. And I want to put that out there to our, our listeners. Yeah, yeah. How are you going to manifest in 2023? And, and the theme of, of um, Transformation Network in 2023 is it's the year to be free, the year to be me. And it was funny, it. Dr. Pat, I put, yeah. um, I, I use that um, in one of my newsletter, my my New Year's newsletter, and a bunch of people then went said, "Oh, Transformation Network is copying you." And it's yes, like, well, no, they no. did. It's like, I'm with Transformation Network. Hello, everybody. Uh, oh my God! But you know, yeah. see, people love you, Mark, and this is what I love about the topic is because you and I are friends, and so there's very stuff like that doesn't bother us. But I just want to tell people, please don't email me and beat me up over this. Okay, I would never take anything from Mark. But we're on a journey joint mission and that's yeah. what the message is we are on a joint mission whether it's look i have a hero i want to mention it's not going to be what people think because i was just talking to my friend david david essel and he's got a new he's doing something amazing we've talked about alcoholism and we've done that but david's on the verge of something really important and i was saying to him you know what there's an unspoken hero that went beyond violated every bill w law and she is Marty Mann. She was my hero and still is. Marty Mann, who nobody knows. If you are in any program, people, don't raise your hand. If you don't know who Marty Mann is, this woman, please look her up. Please read her book. This is a woman that accelerated expansiveness. What does it look like? Here's what it looks like. It means you are a woman in a program that doesn't recognize program alcoholic women back in the day, number one. Number two, she is responsible for for literally having the medical board acknowledge alcoholism as a disease. That's number two. Number three, she was instrumental in bringing the spirituality of high watch into the forum. And number four, she was not quiet. Not only did she talk all over the world about her journey, her story, she was on that television show, Rocky will know it, the television show, I've got a secret where they got the three people up there and she was on the panel. Now, remember, one of the guidelines is to be anonymous. 
how does a program where you have a secret help you develop self-worth? Okay, but that's another show. And that's a personal opinion. But here she is. I've got a secret. Okay, will the real alcoholic stand up? Do you remember that show or am I dating myself? And and who stands up? Marty Man, public television. Now, free, free to be me. 2023, the year to be free. 2023, the year to be me. Why is she my role model today? Because she went up against a system. She's a woman. She was a lesbian. She went up against a system that A, didn't acknowledge women in the program very easily. But number two, she says, I can't keep this silent. How are we going to help people? See, if you're listening to this show today, when you call in, Jacob's grounding things up. What is your free to be me action for 2023? Without judgment, what is it? What are you going to talk to us about? Let's take a short break. When we come back, accelerated expansiveness when you claim and name your birthright today, folks. I want to hear Mark's. I want to hear Rocky's too. <laughs> Stay tuned. Well, let's take a short break, Jacob, if we could. Right, Mark? What do you want to do? A little short break? Yeah, let's do a short break. Okay. And we'll come back. And everybody, call in 800-930-2819. We are going to take your calls tonight. Welcome back to the Psychic and the Doc. You know, I, I love our music. We have such great <laughs> high energy music. It always makes me rock no matter how many times I've, I've heard it. You know, it's it's um it's important for us to have mentors. And I have so many people that 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 I admire. But I have to tell a story. Um, my dad had a lady friend, and she was in her late 80s. And her husband had been a general who had passed. and he was a West Point graduate, which, you know, when you go to the army and you're going to be an officer, you're West Point. And she said one of the most remarkable things that she ever witnessed when she was a young woman was Winston Churchill came to West Point to give the, um, the, 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 the graduation, the commencement speech for all the graduates. And he was very old. And he wasn't doing very well physically. He must have been, because he died when he was 90. So he must have been around like 87, 88. And you got to realize Winston Churchill was a hardcore smoker and drinker. So, you know, his 88 would be like, you know, 108. You know, and now <laughs> she said the most remarkable thing, they they had him, you know, the, the two cadets helped him stand up. He went to the podium. And then all of a sudden, lights were on him the camera was on him everybody was looking and he turned into winston churchill and he <laughs> said never give up never give up never give up never give up thank you <laughs> and he sat down and she said every cadet was on they were jumping screaming hats were flying in the air what better message and who better to deliver Never give up than Winston Churchill. I mean, he became prime minister of Great Britain when they were losing the war. Germany was bombing their cities. Um, his generals, the aristocrats were on him. You got to surrender. And he said, we will never give up. And, and that was a theme throughout his entire life. And when I was a kid, I remember when I was in high school and I was reading his, his books and, you know, a lot of doors in my life have been slammed in, in my face, um, you know, saying, no, you can't come here, you can't do this, you can't go to this college or whatever. And I always remember Winston Churchill yeah. never giving up, but then to actually meet somebody who saw him in action. Um, that to me was very inspiring. And, you know, Dr. Pat, that's what always inspires me about you. You had everything going against you, but spiritual synchronicity put you a, a wrong phone call yeah and it was the pebble the proverbial pebble that started the avalanche and you know i look at all the people who 
um, the rejections at the law firms, the political offices, uh, the publishers that said, oh, well, you know, your book, blah, 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 which is funny because they've all come back now and said, well, when you do your next book, come to us. And I want to <laughs> and I want to thank all the people who turned me down, who slammed the door in my face yeah. and told me I wasn't good enough, this enough, that enough. Thank you, because you didn't deserve me. And the right people did. And that's what it takes sometimes. So just because people, um, you you think that the doors are closing on you and all that, hey, that just gives you more incentive to have accelerated expansiveness. Yeah. Every time somebody said no, it's like, yeah, I'm going to get back at them. Exactly. Yeah, because nothing, there's no revenge better than success. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fascinating you and I have that in common. I'm not sure. I do know where it comes from in my family. I it comes from my uncles who were scrappers. They gave me those boxing gloves at age five, but it does something. I mean, the fact that here's what I've come to know, and we'll go right to the phones. You see, we think that people and things and situations have our destiny in control. Now, if that were true, the 25 schools that rejected me for a doctoral program would have become my destiny. But there was one. And that one sent a letter and Linda got it. And it was a letter from Claremont for the only year that Dr. Cherilyn Grandros, who became my friend, my co-author, my committee chair, was on the recruiting committee. And in the history of that school, it was the first year, and I do believe the last because they got really pissed, that they allowed more experienced worker people in that program than ever. And I was on a wait list, and I was depressed. But Linda sent the form back for me. And a year later, I found myself using credit cards and hopping on a plane and going down to Claremont, California, in a program that I didn't know nothing about. I had no tuition money and I was just there because part of what Mark just said is you have got to have the ability and the energy of expansive. If you are calling in accelerated expansiveness, you must call in the word. Yes. Let's go to the phones, Mr. Jacob. All righty. First caller we've got today is Marie calling in from Florida. Hi there, Marie. Hey, Marie. How can we help you? Hi. Uh, how are you? I am fine. I am fine. I'm so glad you have this program. Thank um, you. Hi, Mark. Hi, Marie. Yes, you Thank, have thanks for calling in. This is all new, to, uh, this program, your program here. And I got the email and I'm just, and I listened to a, a previous one with a uh, man from Italy. I was so touched with <laughs> oh that. Oh my God, oh I my know it. I cried the whole oh. rest of the night on that, right? Oh, wow. yeah. God. If people only knew the stuff, it's true. The stuff is so true, you know? They're missing out, you know? And just those confirmations like that. Oh, my God. Let people come into your life for reasons and stuff. Yeah. And uh, Mark and you, you guys, I mean, you guys are just great. In any case, <laughs> Thank Mark, you. I have. Thank you. Call. Go ahead, Marie. I have, I have done a reading with you before, and you were great. And I'm just wondering, are you getting any messages from above for me? Boom! Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's see who's coming through. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. You got a bunch of people over there. I got six spirits <laughs> lined up. All right, because because it's uh, you know we have to do mini readings on the show. All right, female energy coming through. She's connected to you through your mother's side of the family. She feels like she's on the generational level above you. So that could be the parent level. It could be the grandparent level, but um, um, it feels more like it could be a mom or an aunt or, you know, stepmother. Um, let me work with her a bit. Um, wow. I feel like I'm breaking out into a profuse sweat. So what this is indicating is that she must have been very physically hot um, prior to passing. And I don't think it's from temperature, I mean, the ambient temperature. I think something was going on with her. Um, she could have been running a fever, but I, I feel like I'm soaking wet. And um, okay, fever um, feels like pneumonia, flu type symptoms. She was very, very ill. And uh, God, I got a headache that just will not quit. So this feels a lot like um, pneumonia, COVID, the flu, those type of um, um, 
ailments feel very similar the way I perceive them. And um, what I'm getting with her is, yeah, definitely difficulty breathing. Feels like she could have been on a ventilator. This, did you have anyone connected to you that may have died from a lung disease, like a COVID or a pneumonia? That's what this feels like. No, not that, no, not that I know of. Um, no, I'm not letting you I off the hook, Marie. Is there somebody that could have been a lung issue, um, uh, some somebody that had to be an oxygen or a ventilator? Um, All right, no, I want you to ponder no, that. Let's get to her message, okay? okay. Um, what's with you and all the lettuce? She showed me heads of lettuce, field <laughs> greens. I mean, the greens are off the charts. Do you love them? Do you hate um, them? What's going on with that? <laughs> I just made a salad earlier. That could be the condition. Yeah, all right. That's yeah. a yes. Yeah. All right. You made yeah. a salad earlier. The spirits around you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you it's, used to work with this person. I, I get the feeling oh. that you used to work with this person. She could have been in some type of employment setting with you. Um, and okay. she's also telling you. Um, you finally learned to stop hitting the panic button. That's interesting. Would you say, Marie, that you're a lot calmer now than you used to be, especially in a crisis or emergency situation? Yeah, I'm not very good at that stuff. I can't. Really. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, then that I may be the lesson she's presenting. One. Yeah, that's the lesson, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, Dr. Pat, um, I, I need your insights on this one. Okay, thank you. Okay, you know, you can know I, what, Mark? Mark, do you just you don't feel my husband, do you? I'm sorry. N no, it's a woman. You don't, it's you a don't, female. It's a female. It's a female. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, one. it's a female energy. But what Mark explains, and he can explain it to you, is sometimes they talk to each other. This is my word, Mark. Yeah. Go, <laughs> sometimes go, go they ahead. talk to each other, and so. But I, I, I let me ask you a question. What does asbestos mean to you? You know what asbestos, asbestos is? Yes, I know what asbestos is. Um, how do you know yeah, what it is? Um, Tell me how you know what it is. Um, I just know because in houses, when you purchase a you know a house, they okay. want you know the asbestos. Yeah. But how do you know that? Um, Who? What? What happened that made you aware of that? Just purchase purchasing a. Uh, house i guess that would be the the main who did you purchase the house I with um i purchased the house with my husband when okay he was alive. okay so the reason it's coming up for me is i don't know um but nine times out of ten when people buy a home they're not familiar with asbestos it's just not a thing you know i mean unless there's something in the house Right. What did your husband do for a living? He was um, he was an investigator for the government. And like like you don't have to share like if he was with the CIA or anything like that. What kind of investigator? He was a law enforcement. Okay. Something about what Mark shared in this, there's some connection and I don't know what's coming up with asbestos. I don't know if it was something he did or something he found, but I want to give you a message okay. about it. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay, because I don't know if he passed away from that. I was kind of wondering what he did pass away from. Well, no, I don't know either. But did he have oh, okay. lung issues? Is that what did, did your husband have lung issues? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. Yes or no? no? What? Not. I don't think okay. it's his heart. It's hard. No. So yeah. it's not him. But here's what happens to me when I hear messages like this until you can figure it out. M Marie, how's your uh -huh. breathing? How, how are you breathing? How's your breathing? Um, it's good as far as I know. Thank God. Okay. And so the message that, that I think for me, when I think about this, 
is you called in for a reason. You wanted to hear from your husband, correct? That's yes. Yes. Do, is that because you yes. miss your husband? Yes. Yeah. See, this is what I did. Okay. I, I want to take a minute to acknowledge that. All messaging aside for a moment, if you don't mind. Because I could feel you miss your husband. He was your best friend, yeah? I'm sorry, what? He was your best friend? Yeah. Okay. He was your protector? Yeah. In some ways? Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah, you're you're a pretty powerful woman anyway, so I don't want to dismiss that. So I want to be clear. But you had this relationship together extremely supportive. Is that an understatement? Um that I have a relationship um uh, with people that are supportive of me. No, your husband. You had a very supportive husband. Is that her protector guy? Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, li yes. Like, yeah. Like like the Hulk or something, right? Yeah, he was very supportive, took care of me. Okay. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do. I, I mean, my heart goes out for you because I could feel your love. I really can. Whenever Mark gets a message like this, I we have found there's always something in here. So I really want you to think about whoever this woman is that came in. There's a message, right, Mark? Yeah, See, that's th the point, there isn't is. there? There is. And the, the message is about getting better about hitting the panic button. That's yes. the message. Um, I, I just That's about back... breathing too, Mark, just so you know what I picked up yeah. on. Okay. People, panic attacks. Yeah. Panic attack. Thank you. Now, see what I'm saying? Panic that's... button, panic attack. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you see what Mark's saying? So yeah. I don't know if you do had that. these recently, if your heart hurt, if things are disturbing you, if you've been in a level of state of anxiety and you don't have to share it on this show, okay? But the message through him or her, because he's a protector, Mark, right? right. And I could see that message coming through this, whoever this woman is. Take what we're saying to heart. Learn some tools to become calmer and to be more calm in your life, okay? Do you know what I'm saying here? Don't sweat the yeah. small stuff, yeah. Marie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounded yeah. like yeah, that I'm, came I'm, from him. <laughs> yeah, let me back up a bit. Um, okay. Marie, is your mom in spirit? Yes. What was the cause of her passing? Um, she had, um, gangrene. She had sugar diabetes. She had what? Gangrene. Where did she have it? Sugar. In her, on her toe. She had gangrene, Mark. And that, that wasn't it. This is mm -hmm. a female energy connected to you through your mom's side of the family. And she's really yeah. strong. The thing is, don't worry about it, Marie, because, um, I, in fact, I got a, a message through Facebook on a show that we did a couple of weeks back where the last caller um it it was it was her brother and she didn't realize it till after the show so so just take some time with that but i think what dr pat's saying is that the the message is about hitting the panic button so yeah. that's the thing to work on yeah um do you get panic attacks ever i i get real nervous i'm a nervous i'm a nervous I'm oh there a you go boy. No. You're yeah. worry wart. Yeah. You said you're a worry wart. Did yeah. you say that? That's it. This message is so for you. Yeah. This, right. This message is for you. Look. It. Yeah. It. And I'm worried because, you know, I, you know, with my husband, the way he passed, it's just, yeah, just very hard. It's just very you're hard. hard. Are you worried about your livelihood? Or you just miss him? What What is the worry from? It's it's he's just that you know I just miss him in the way he passed away. I just hope that I didn't have anything to do with it. He passed away suddenly. Yes. Mm. It's hard, isn't it? When that happens, isn't yeah. it hard? Yeah. 
You know, um, Dr. Pat, when you were talking about asbestos, mm -hmm. I, I keep getting this sense. Um, was, was your husband exposed to any type of toxic chemicals? And you said that you and your husband purchased a house with asbestos because I keep getting a metallic taste in my mouth. And a metallic yeah. taste can, and sometimes it means gunshot, but I don't think that's here. Um, and But a metallic taste can indicate toxicity. Mm -hmm. It can also indicate something neurological, um, like I, a, a seizure, convulsion, yeah. stroke. Yeah. Is there anything there? Stay with the gunshot thing. What do you, do you relate to anything that Mark just said, including the gunshot thing? No, no. Thank God. No. Right. What did he, I'm just curious, what did he pass from? They think it was his heart, but because it was the COVID time, they didn't do the, you know. The, you oh, know, I yes. Asked, yeah. yeah. So I've always questioned what really you know, was it as far or not? You know? No. And with that, but now you're coming up with the asbestos, and maybe because he worked in the house a lot too. Mm. Stuff. Yeah, I don't think that's the cause of it. I think asbestos yeah. came up because I think the message is from him and I'm not Mark. So take what I say. Take what I say carefully. Um, what I mean is, for me, asbestos came up because I don't know. I think he's trying to tell you. You have to find peace. Um, hold, hold on. I don't Go mean ahead. to interrupt. He, yeah, he's coming through. The reason I'm getting the metallic taste, he's explaining to me, see, you're going back and forth. Was it a heart attack? Was it COVID? Was it a heart attack? It was COVID. It was all of the above. The COVID created a condition where he went into cardiopulmonary failure. That's why I'm tasting the metallic taste because uh, there's a neurological component to that. So there's a difference between a heart attack yeah. and cardiac arrest. A heart mm -hmm. attack is when blood flow, that's a circulation issue. Cardiac arrest is an electrical issue. And that's why I'm getting that electrical neurological component. Um, and, you know, obviously, Marie, you wish that you could have foreseen something or done something to have intervened and, and helped him. And he said that, and, and this is interesting too, Dr. Pack, because when you're talking about the asbestos and yeah. I'm getting this, this like lead poisoning, all yeah. that, his system was weakened by some type of toxic exposure could have been years ago. And he, you know, he's the proverbial like eggshell, um, eggshell that he, he just was brittle and the COVID uh, basically caused his passing. Um I know this is going to sound flippant, Marie, but he's handing you two different types of ice cream. One is strawberry. <laughs> the other is pistachio. Don't worry about um, um, how, how that's applying to him. The strawberries or strawberry ice cream or pistachio nuts or pistachio ice cream make sense to you in any way? Yes, it does. He loves strawberry ice cream. He there loves you go. There, there you go. go. Okay. There we go. And what about pistachios and pistachio ice cream? Does that make sense to you in any way? I like pistachio ice cream. Okay. Bada bing, <laughs> bada, bada bam. I knew that's we would a, get to it. I knew a, we would get to it. Yeah, that's but, a verifiable so, fact following the message. And so when a spirit gives us a message of an explanatory advisory nature, he's explaining to me that his system was predisposed and it was weakened over years of, uh, you know, we all, we're all exposed to something throughout our lives and it was there. And then when the COVID hit, you know, you're looking at was the heart attack was a COVID. It, it, you know, it doesn't, COVID just doesn't affect one part of the body. It affected everything. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what sent him into the cardiac failure. So, so you don't think the arguing or anything caused it was what are what arguing? What arguing? Because we had a terrible argument. Oh, here we go. Okay. okay, I knew it. I know. I knew. Okay, no, no. Why? Do, no, no. And and if I can, why do you think go, he's Mark. handing out uh, pistachio ice cream to you? Um, imagine this: your argument is over. 
And he said, let's make up. And he, he gets you a pistachio ice cream cone and he gets a strawberry ice cream cone. The two of you sit down and you have your ice cream cones together. That's a pretty nice way to make up an argument, yeah. isn't it? Boy, yeah. And it is really time for you to release that right now. Marie, you have to release this right now. You have to release the guilt because there is no guilt. There is no guilt. So it's only your, there's only your love. So he doesn't. So he doesn't feel like it was my fault that he passed away. Oh, Mark, no, Mark. no, See, no, That's no. what she's carrying. Um, no, um, okay. yeah. Absolutely. Um, it is not your fault. That's why, um, that's why he's coming through. And that's why he's explaining all of this. You know, when somebody dies and, and Dr. Pat, uh, as a psychologist can definitely speak to this. You know, we all want it to be like a Walton's Christmas special where somebody's passing in bed and all the loved ones are around and we all get to make our Hallmark you know, greeting card farewells. All right. But it doesn't always happen that way. And husbands and wives, they snipe at each other and all this, and that becomes part of the relationship. But Marie, he wants you to know you didn't kill him because you're arguing. He, he passed because of a disease. All right. And because he had a physical mm -hmm. predisposition for this. Mm -hmm. And he wants you to know how much he loves you. And he keeps giving you the stone a topaz. Mm -hmm. And a topaz is the birthstone for the month of November. So there may be some significance connected to you or him within the month of November, a birth, death, anniversary, or event, which could be connected to him, oh, yeah. to you. Or, 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 go ahead. Yeah. It is Topaz is um his birthday. Um his birthday's in November and our anniversary was in November. And there's there the verifiable go. fact there following the message yeah. that he, yeah. he does not blame you. You did not cause this. You are not responsible for his passing and he loves you. That's the advice and explanation. And because Zynga it. he follows it. it up with the yeah. topaz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're yeah. gonna take a short break. And then look, okay. here's the thing. He's a buster too, because he gave me that asbestos business to keep you on. That's the this guy is a buster. This guy, he, he, he's he, he's a he, he's he was, a worker. He was a, he he's a, a good piece cop. of work <laughs> right there. To keep to give me I'm asbestos sure. so I keep you on to what? Yes. You have got to learn some calming methodology. You got it? No, you did not cause his death. Nope. Oh, so he gave you the asbestos so to keep me on? Yeah, to keep to get me distracted enough to talk to you, to keep you on for an extra 20 minutes here. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so my just okay, you guys have helped me so much. Just the last thing. So if he if the COVID didn't come around, do you think he would have still been alive? We don't know. We don't do predictions and we're not doctors. All we know is this call is not no. about any of that. This call is about you letting go of the guilt and shame now. Yeah, yeah. Right um, now. Marie, take the positive message. Yeah, I love you and you're not guilty. And stop churning yeah. and, and oh, trying to gosh, find stop. a reason to blame yourself. Oh. You've got you've you've got to be either A Italian or B Catholic. Which one is it? <laughs> Italian, 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 and Catholic. I said both. Well, then, see, please, it's, an, it's entirely your fault because you're a bad person. All right, no, stop you're that. not. Stop you're that. Not. I'm okay. making a joke. You're a good person, Marie. You're not, and a you did wife. Reason. You were his best friend. Stop oh, it a, with the guilt. He loves you, always will, and let the guilt go. And go have some strawberry ice cream tonight in his honor with some pistachio. Thank you, Marie. All Thank right, we're going to stay. You. We're going to go right to the next call. Thank you. Thank you all for being okay. patient Thank with us. You. I knew. Thank you, Marie. Oh, happy uh, happy New Year. Oh, that was so good. Right. Jacob, let's keep rolling. Sounds great. We've got Sharon calling in from Fort Lauderdale next. Hi there, Sharon. Hello. Hey, Sharon. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. What can we do? I'm good. What can we do for you? Well, you know, I got this message from Mark. I actually called a few weeks ago before Christmas actually and you know I I was the one that had all the regrets from the past and all of that and both of you were really good at helping me talking about you know you have to have perspective on this and my mother came through 
And, you know, Mark mentioned somebody that had a double mastectomy, which happened to be my first cousin. And then, you know, you have that perspective on things, you know, you can't go back in the past and all that, you know, and what you said made sense. And then there were a couple callers that called in and one of them, Mark said, I- I'm getting a male who had, you know, like a taste of blood in the mouth and, and definitely something to the head. And I thought, you know, she said, no, no, no. And I said, that sounds like my brother and things that my brother was saying to me about, you worry about everything, just take things a step at a time. It just sounded like my brother, you know, and he did have a very yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Sharon, first off, thank you for calling in. Secondly, I'm so glad that you did because for the benefit of all the listeners, you got to realize I'm not a bouncer. All right. And we get a bunch of callers and all of your spirits come in and they don't all right. line up in a nice orderly line going, OK, I'm spirit number one. So what <laughs> happened was your brother was in the queue. We had some other callers in there and then you're hearing them say, wait, that's my brother. OK, now there is a male coming through and I feel like I want to really burst out laughing. Was your brother real funny in like the life of the party? Yeah. Yes. He OK. Was. All lot. right. Mm-hmm. He keeps he, he this is a weird um image uh, vision he's giving me. I'm seeing a, an old fashioned jack in the box and I'm like pop goes the weasel and a jack in the box. Oh, I don't. Do you know what that I'm that trying is? I think of it. Not necessarily at this time. Maybe oh, so, yeah, it'll come to yeah, me later, but I don't know. It could be a surprise, something a surprise, but a lot of times when I get a jack in the box, that could indicate a male name that starts with the letter J, like a Jim, Jack, John, Joe, Jeff, John, something like that. But I have, keep, yeah, I have a son. Uh, mm-hmm. you, go you have ahead. a what? I have a son, you, a son with a J name, yes. Okay. Um, is your son real sharp, real observant, and doesn't miss a trick? I think so. Yeah, well, that's what your brother is saying. He, he, he's zeroing in on your son. And he said that um, your son's also a very good listener. And he said, and when you think he isn't listening to what you're telling him, like he's ignoring you, he really isn't. Mm -hmm. He is listening to you. So your brother wants you to know that about your son. And it's nice because I get Hmm. that your son is, in your brother's words, a good egg. Okay, I believe that. But when you say he's ignoring me, you know, I just got off talking to him. A few weeks ago, because he doesn't call. (laughs) It's like once a month, I hear from him, and I said, how would you feel if your son called you once a month? He he got Mm. quiet and said, I don't know. Well, that sounds like ignoring to me. Oh, that's awful. And I bet he's thinking about (laughs) it, too. Oh, that could very well be. Yeah, there's there's a lot of feelings. You know how people can feel each other's energy? Yeah. I, I definitely feel there's an energy thing going on right now. Okay. okay. With, with all of it. Uh, see, see, and that's exactly why he brought up your son. Well, Sharon, thank you so much thank for calling you. in. Oh, and, yeah. And call us thank back in a, in a couple of weeks and let us know what your conversation with your son is like. And feel free to tell oh, him that his uncle in spirit said, you better call mom or you're going to have a hard time sleeping. <laughs> wow, wow. Thank you. That, that's I know. really cool. Oh, it thank is cool. You. That's thank you so too. much. I just thank, wonder... you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, my God. Um, Jacob. Yeah, next up, we've got Fawn calling in from Orinda, California. Hi there, Fawn. Hello there, Fawn. So can you put can you put her on hold and chat with her and then Mark and I will keep going so she so she knows yeah, she's on. We've got Ricky now calling in from Oregon. Hello, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Pardon? Welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, how are you? What can we do for you? I'll connect you with Mark. Um, I just you know before my husband passed, I just never knew what grief was. I've lost family members and friends and this and that, but you know, the spouse, somebody that you have lived with for 20 some years. Um, I really understand what grief is now. 
And mm. yeah. when he first passed away, all I could think of was I just wanted him to be okay. You know, I told him, the hospice people said, have you told him that you'll be okay? And so I I had not told my husband that I would be okay. So I thought, I better tell him I'll be okay um, so that he can let go. And so I was really strong, um, probably the first year or nine months, you know, kept really busy. Mm -hmm. I was really strong because I felt like I told him I'd be okay, so I have to be okay. And I, you know, but grief is just the hardest Off. thing I have ever dealt with. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But I, and I just, I am a believer all of a sudden. I've watched your show a couple times. I've listened to Father Nathan. Um, and I feel that he's okay and that there is something beyond this physical world. Mm -hmm. So let me ask Mark, may I? Go right ahead. Let me ask you a question. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling better. The holidays were really rough. I think yeah, the holidays always with, yeah. yep. um, you know, it's dark. Um, there's not as much sun. There's always been stress with the holidays. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of like Marie. I'm a worry wart. <laughs> um, um, but I feel better now. I feel like, okay, I've got to get out, quit feeling sorry for myself Yeah. and get out and make some connections and realize that, you know, I don't have my husband anymore and I have to learn how to stand alone and take care of myself and get some more confidence mm -hmm. because he was so supportive, you know. I do. I do know. I do know that. What I want to say is you have to stand, but you don't have to stand alone. Mm -hmm. See, that's that's the message for this year for a lot of us. Now, what that's mm -hmm. what is that going to look like for you? It's different for everybody. Um, you know, for me, I plunged myself into service because that's just my nature. It was my nature at the time. But what ways can you commit to today to reach out and simply be around other people, just to be around them? Yes, making phone calls. I was looking oh. at the New York Times, like, well-being, and one was, like, making a connection, making a phone yeah. call, like, calling a friend for, and having an eight-minute conversation. So I did that this morning. Perfect. Um, yeah. And yesterday I went and visited some friends. They gave me... They got a new TV, and I got their old TV, so I went and visited with them. Um, Good. So, yes, reaching out and Okay. Um, getting, I, I don't mean to interrupt, you know, but I Go have ahead, a, Mark. Hold on. Yeah, I got a male spirit coming through, so hold on. Um, and um, you indicated that he was with hospice. Uh, your husband was with hospice, and I'm getting a draining sensation throughout my body, and a draining sensation is an indicator, obviously, that this was not a quick passing. And he wants you to know that you being with him and speaking with him and comforting him, he said you made it easier for him. Because your husband is a courageous guy. He was a strong man, um, and he had a, a, a strong personality, but he was scared. He was scared. And he said you being yeah. there, you were like his life raft, you know, and I know this is going to sound corny, but but let me finish, please. He's beaming into my brain a vision. Do you, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Titanic, but in the end yeah. where Rose is on that piece of furniture or whatever it was and Jack was hanging on to it, he said, that was us at my passing. And he said, you gave me the strength to let go. And I'm like ready to like burst into tears because he's transmitting this emotion through me. And he said, he is so happy 
that you were in his life and mm. you are still in his life. And he wants you to know that he is around you. He visits you quite a bit. And he keeps talking about angel wings. And he's holding like this little, it's almost like a military insignia of wings. And he's handing it to you. Does that make any sense to you? Well, you know, he used to tell me these stories and he was long winded. And thankfully, I remember a lot of the stories because sometimes they just go on and on and I'd kind of space out. But he would tell me the story about when he was a little boy, he asked God, he said, if you, he, he asked God, he closed his eyes and asked God, if you are real, show me a butterfly. And when he opened his eyes, there was a butterfly. And I've had some synchronicities, particularly after he passed. I went out hiking on the mountain, trying to find him and trying to find myself by hiking alone. And came home, and here was this van covered with butterflies. And I'll tell you, I stopped, and I conversed with the people that had that van and took mm. pictures, and I was smiling so broadly. I mean, it was just like, this is a sign, you know, mm. butterflies. And he's hand and wings to you, so there you go. Um, I don't know wow. if you had the opportunity to read my my first book, Never Letting Go. But um, that is it. Okay. That's a guide on the journey through grief. Each one of my books is for, for different, um, they're, they're all about coping with loss. They're all about explaining the afterlife. But I think for you, never letting go would be extremely helpful in getting you through to the next level. Because like you mm -hmm. said, you didn't know grief until this happened. And as Dr. Pat has said many times, grief is not mental illness. It's part of the human condition and something we go through, but it sure ain't easy. No, no, I never said it was easy. But I think the message, Mark, that really is important in the time we have left is um, there, there are other things I want to say to you. Um, uh, when I say um, people, I think calling is great. I, I don't know where you live. I don't know what the possibilities are, but on really good days when people go to parks and are with nature, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. I live out in the woods. I take walks every day in the woods okay. and I'm alone and it's beautiful. Yes. Now I want you to find, try and places to walk where there are people. <laughs> mm. yes. yes. Okay. No, I love walking yeah. alone. Believe me. I am such an introvert. Oh my gosh. It would make you, it would, you'd be scared. Yes, How much of an I am. I I'm am. a Sagittarius. Though I am too. There you go. Um, Are you? I am. December 11th. Ah. Yep. Mm. Now. November 26th. It okay. is so yeah, hard. I want you to So talk. I have to play ping pong to be around people. I love playing table tennis, but I love being mm. around the people. And so I want you to think about being around people because we have not been around people for for years now. And I don't mean mm -hmm. you have to talk to him, but just like the guy that you took the pictures of. So if there is a place where you can walk or you can just sit on a bench and just be around the energy of other humanity. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm yeah. saying? Mm, definitely. Nature. Okay. I just, yes, that's photography. You know, yeah. that's, oh. I, it fills me up. Do it. Get out there. Do it. Okay. Now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done. So you really have to make a disciplined decision that you will do it. Cause believe me, it's so much easier to stay at home, isn't it? Well, I walk every day cause I got the two dogs. Oh, so, um, okay. You got the dogs. I Good. got my two little dogs, you know, and, <laughs> and one was Tim's buddy, you know, and when I'm saying his name, um, when he died, I thought that dog was going to go into terrible mourning. They were, he was like an umbilical cord attached no, to my husband. When hospice came, are. he would growl and we had they to are. separate him and leash him up, you know. And yeah. I thought that dog would go into mourning. And I'll tell you, we thought he was going to die a few times because he was like lifeless. And when my husband died, that dog came to life. And it was like, oh my gosh, the spirit of my husband went into the dog. Okay, that's it. So I don't know how you're going to do this, but the dogs, you need to be around people 
and have you with the dogs, but let your face light up. See, that's my message. You have to allow for your face to light up and the dogs yeah. will do that. I just heard your energy, but there's something about being around other people that reminds you of your humanness and your spiritualness. Mm -hmm. Would you take that now from us? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Thank and, you. And real quick, the, your husband's spirit did not go into the dog. Dogs are very uh, sensitive to the presence of spirits and what mm -hmm. your husband indicated is your dog was relieved that your husband was no longer suffering. And even though they don't fully understand what they're perceiving to a sense, the dog saw your husband ascend immediately into the light. And that's mm -hmm. the message you need to, to, um, to, to understand and absolutely follow Dr. Pat's advice. You need some human interaction. So I'm going to leave that with you. Thank you for calling in and thank God you. bless you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for tuning us in and turning us on tonight and, you know, being such a beacon of light for all of us and reminding us of our own humanity and reminding us of our own magic. Right, Mark? Yes. And I thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we're going to be back next week and every week to take your calls. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Jacob. Happy 2023. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to The Psychic in the Dark with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat Basile, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife extraordinary problems yeah they do they require extraordinary solutions but step into the world of possibilities with us on the psychic and the dot that's every thursday 4 p.m pacific time 7 p.m eastern time right here on transformationtalkradio.com that's transformationtalkradio.com and don't forget we're also live face to face on facebook.com transformation talk radio <laughs>